What's up everybody? Today is a complete washout. If anyone's on the East Coast in this time in the beginning of May, you know that 2019 is a complete washout. It has been raining for like days on end. No, really, I mean like, I can't even like get out of the bus. It's just all water. I have to like jump the curb just to not get in the water and that's probably mud. I'm going to slip and fall. I'm not going to get that on film for you. But today is a weekend so I'm not on the shuttle bus build so I was trying to come up with a video that I can make this weekend and I remember that probably about a year ago I promised you that I would start doing mini micro tours of my school bus and I did the living room tour last year. You can check that out. I will link it right up here. If not, I'm going to be moving on into the kitchen area and kind of sharing my thoughts, things that I've learned over the last three years that maybe I would do differently now and some of the things that I think I did right and that I would suggest you maybe do in your build. But I wanna look at the kitchen, break it down, show you exactly what I'm talking about. So let's go take a look at it. So this stove is a residential four burner propane stove. So I am running propane on this bus. We haven't seen that in previous videos. Um, I do run a propane heater, water heater, and oven, so all of those. But the oven is definitely oversized for a 180 square foot school bus. But honestly, I love to cook. I love to have people over for, as guests. I've had something like 22 roommates in the last three years. Um, so this bus has definitely been used and all four of these burners have been used. So I've definitely really enjoyed that. Even the oven I've used, i uh, done Thanksgiving in this bus twice. Uh, once it was at my parents' house and once actually in Key West this past year with a bunch of friends who also live in school buses. So would I do this again? Um, probably, I would probably just go with an apartment size, which would be, I believe, like 26 inches. This one's 30. Um, so it's still four burners, but it's just smaller. I don't think I would go down all the way to a one or two burner just because I love to cook, so it's important to me. The other nice thing about this stove is I actually got it for like $120 because the back of it was damaged and it was on the, sh uh, the showroom floor. So I got a pretty good discount for this one. So it was kind of on a budget when I was building this bus. So it also worked that the residential options are a lot cheaper than like a lot of propane options on the market or the apartment size options on the market. So. That was a good plus there. So now we're gonna go look at the sink. So this sink is, once again, a residential deep base sink. When I was building this bus, I already had a really big oven and I already have a really big refrigerator. So I figured I'm gonna be doing a lot of cooking, so I need a sink that can actually fit the pans that I'm gonna cook with. Sometimes when I see people build vans and buses, and even in some houses, I kind of laugh to myself when they put a super small sink in when they're using like a normal like egg pan because the egg pan doesn't even fit in the sink you're supposed to clean it in. It doesn't really make much sense to me. So knowing my lifestyle and what I knew I was doing going into this, uh, a big sink works because when I have tons of friends over and there are a bunch of dishes, they all fit right here. I can keep it clean, do them and uh, call it a day. Even though I have a residential sink, I do have an RV faucet with an RV water pump. So when you turn the faucet, the water comes out, you hear the pump run. So it is still RV setup, just using a lot of residential features. So this knife rack was actually really important to me. Um, I really wanted a magnetic one because I wanted the look of the knives hanging like this. The problem is, which so many people love to comment about every time they see my bus, is that these knives are gonna fly off and hit me. Um, Maybe, uh, but most likely not because I got probably some of the strongest magnets I could find in the market and these knives have never even fallen off uh, driving in the last two years, even going up the Alaskan Highway, um, going on back roads. I mean, I've never even had these things fall off. So, I mean, if I get an accident and these things fly off, it is going to be one massive accident and I'm going to have more worries than these knives. So, we'll just have to see what happens. But so far, I love it. They're super easy to grab and cook with. Um, so they're a great thing to have right there when you're trying to cook and cut things up. So right here is my pantry. I built this pantry simply because my parents had a pantry growing up. So it's, in my mind, a house has a pantry, so I built one. It's definitely, I would change this a little bit, all I can say. Uh, it has great room, it has great space, but they're very deep and it's hard to reach all the way to the back and I tend to actually lose things back there where I'm like totally forget that I bought something a long time ago. Um, so I think I would change these to racks or drawers in the future or maybe put baskets in there that I can then remove so I can see everything that's within. 
Um, two things that I found in living in the school bus is that really, really deep storage isn't really helpful because it's just too far away to functionally use it and vertical storage is really not useful, um, such as this cabinet, which I can show you right here. So this cabinet is pretty much my things just fly around when I drive cabinet. And the reason is because it's just a big blank open space and really what I should have done and I still should do is put shelves in here so that things don't have as much space to room. Also then I can maximize this higher space because right now it's it just it always is a mess. I can never keep it clean because every time you hit a bump everything just goes flying. Um, so I think that's something that I would change or something that I would consider when redesigning this type of space. The other thing that is a huge issue when driving and building school buses are drawers flying and opening. In a typical residential house, unless you're having an earthquake, the drawers aren't probably gonna open on their own. But in a school bus, these things will fly open and all their contents will go flying. So the one thing that I always try to do is put the child safety locks on or some other form of cabinet lock on so that when you're driving, even if something pushes up against it, they're gonna be able to hold closed. So all the cabinets are actually just on these locks. Uh, the only ones that I kind of think I regret is that I would use different ones on the drawers. They have the um, channel locks on them, but I just don't think that they're strong enough for the weight that I put in the drawers. So the, sometimes these actually open and they have flown out. So I think in the future or when I finally get around to it, I'll probably put a similar lock on these as well just so that they can stay closed. Another good option is that I use bungee cords in the back here and that actually takes all the force of these three drawers together and kind of keeps them all going. So if one try, you know, starts to open, the bungee cord typically takes it back in. So unless I'm hitting a really, really hard bump or I'm pushing a turn really, really hard, which I shouldn't be doing anyway, uh, these drawers aren't gonna be going anywhere. Another thing that I didn't mention is that I, when I designed the kitchen, I made sure that all of the drawers and cabinets open towards the center so it's super easy when cooking. So coming into the hallway past the pantry, I have my fridge. Um, it is inset on top of the wheel well, so that was a, how I was able to hide the wheel well was I used the fridge on kind of this bump up custom insert style so that I was able to hide that. Um, the fridge is a typical, you know, 120 volt residential fridge. Um, it is very large, but once again, um, this was kind of the community bus. I've had tons of roommates, so having storage space for people and all the food for the amount of people that have been on this bus were very important. When I'm by myself, I tend to really only use the bottom part of the fridge, um, try to not really open it much, try to keep the power in, but this thing runs completely on my off-grid system and I haven't really had any issues. Um, another thing is that I put this really cool kind of simple lock on it. Um, it just opens and closes and holds the doors closed while I'm driving because if this wasn't on there and I took a sharp turn, um, this thing would just open and all my food would go flying, which has happened when I forget to put this guy down. So if you know anything about me, the idea of community, having people over and having the ability to provide a space for hospitality is super important to me. So my kitchen obviously represents that by the large stove, the large sink, the large fridge, all of these kind of residential larger appliances that you typically wouldn't see in a tiny space. Those are super important to me because of the way that I intend to live my lifestyle and have been with the amount of people that have been able to break bread with me on the school bus. So in my kitchen, it was super important to not only have open space for cooking, but I also had natural light. So I put a skylight directly in the middle of the kitchen. Um, I love it, I would do it again. My only suggestion in what I did is that I used a high grade um, plexiglass. It works great, it was easy to bend over the curve of the bus, but it's really hard to mold out on the inside and over time I have found that unless you use a really, really good plexiglass, um, it is possible for them to crack where you actually attach it. Um, I've had one crack before, so I think what I would do now is I would just go buy the marine hatches. They open, um, which gives you a lot more ventilation. So if you're looking for a skylight that opens, I would go towards the marine hatches and not necessarily this option. This was a lot more of a cost-effective option when I was building uh, the marine hatches. I mean, has the word marine on it, they're gonna be more expensive. But the other option that I think I would like to still do in the future is I'd like to probably put a max fan somewhere in here. Um, cooking, I typically just open the window and all the venting goes out the window. But I think with the past three years, I mean, it's not really stained the wood, but I just think a max fan would help with ventilation while cooking. Um, something that I didn't put in originally, but I think would be a possible good idea in the future. So. Um, ventilation is definitely important to be able to kind of clear out the airspace, especially when we're living in, you know, essentially sealed tubes. Uh, another thing that is kind of in my kitchen is this fire alarm. Everyone always asks, like, do you have fire alarms? Do you have your pain detectors? Um, yes, I do. 
The one funny thing about this fire alarm is I put it, you know, in good distance to the oven thinking that'd be a smart location, and it is. But the funny thing is, is that since this space is so small, when I use the propane stove and the heat from that starts heating up the bus, almost every single time this thing goes off, um, so it is super helpful when I'm not cooking, obviously, if there was a fire, but when I am cooking, I always have to take this thing down and just put it on the counter so that it doesn't actually keep going off. So, um, I don't really know how to solve that problem because, I mean, anywhere you put in the bus, it's going to get hot when you're cooking. So, um, maybe just something you deal with for safety, but it definitely works. And now my favorite part of my kitchen, which is the countertops. So these countertops are not actually bought anywhere. They were custom made by me and my dad. The fun story behind these actual countertops are that they were actually 4x4s that my friend found on the side of the road and he actually cut them down to 1x3s for me so I was able to dowel them together and build these countertops. So besides the epoxy and the actual countertop fill, uh, these things were pretty much free which was kind of great. So if anyone's looking for really cool wood countertops, you don't always have to buy them sometimes you can just build them and looking at these upper cabinets i always get questions of how do you attach them up here so i attach these top cabinets by putting a beam in the roof before i even did the ceiling so i had an attachment point um, it's hard to see right now but there's a beam right here and a beam right here for the windows and the thing is is that you need to hit those beams otherwise there's nothing to really nail to and these cabinets would just fall down so when i was designing this bus I had to kind of know where these were going before I even built the rest of the bus because I had to put that framing in um, inside the ceiling so that I could actually have something to put a screw in rather than just having to go into this really thin ceiling tile. So with anything, as you can see, there are things to change and there are things that I did right. And either way, this bus has served me super well in the last three years. And for driving about 70,000 miles, I think it's also held up pretty well too. Well, there you have it. That is my kitchen tour. I just want to say thank you for watching. I hope you found something helpful in the fact that I was sharing both the positives and negatives of things that I've learned over the last three years and the way in which I built my kitchen. So if you found something positive that's going to influence your design, I hope so. If you found something that I did negative that you can fix before you do it, that's great too. Either way, next time we're going to be looking at my bedroom and bathroom towards the back of the bus. So I hope you'll join me for that video. Either way, I just want to say thank you for watching. See you next time.